To be an effective leader, one's followers must have confidence in them, and for that, one must have confidence in themselves. Strategies to overcome a lack of self-confidence where it exists are an essential part of becoming an effective leader and for advancing career progression, since positive attitudes towards abilities are known to predict successful use of them. The good news from the psychology literature is that self-confidence is a state of mind that is both learned and can be trained. In order to improve their self-confidence, an individual needs to know themselves. Good personal development plans should include training and development activities around self-awareness and self-understanding tools, as well as those that frame communication and choosing appropriate ways of interacting with peers, team members and superiors to gain feedback, since confidence is relating to knowing you're competent, and this can only be affirmed by others. You may be able to access such activities through your employer or a professional career coach. Alternatively, a wise personal career investment to make is to enrol in an MBA program, which in particular are designed to impart this kind of knowledge. Of course, completing this MicroMasters and the associated on-campus masters at the University of Queensland are excellent avenues for pursuing personal development. Knowing what is required in your role, project or assignment, and the level of competence and experience expected, as well as having a reasonably good idea about the level of competence and experience of those people around you, is critical. When a leader has an understanding of these two things, they have a barometer or standard external to themselves that they can more or less objectively measure. The task of the leader is then to know their stuff, to develop their skill set to the degree that they can objectively say, I know as much about this as anyone, or even better, go the extra distance and read more widely, attend conferences and presentations, acquire further qualifications, question more experienced people, and gain a degree of expertise in those areas. In this way, leaders may even be able to create a niche for themselves and become known as the go-to person on those kinds of issues. This cannot hurt in attracting clients or internal referrals and in turn creating additional opportunities for meaningful networking. However, to do so often requires taking risks, being prepared to try and to fail. There is a limit to what academic or vicarious learning can teach. Some things can only be learned through personal experience. The good news is that resilience is built by working through and overcoming these failures. However, knowing something is often not enough in terms of self-confidence and self-belief. People need to test their knowledge against others to confirm their belief. Speaking with mentors is one way of testing and confirming knowledge, and this aspect of mentoring has been reported as being very important. Having a solid knowledge or understanding of an area makes it a lot easier for an individual to be confident and to take more informed risks. It also evidences the distance between what is known now and what is required to be known at the end of an assignment or project, allowing the leader to be more confident in putting up their hand to undertake new activities and provide guidance to followers on those they have mastered. A side benefit of the above process is that it makes it easier to contribute in structured, meaningful and useful ways at meetings with superiors. Finally, the degree to which people view an individual as being self-confident is based upon how they convey or contribute their knowledge. Confident communication is necessary both upwards and downwards. Followers need to believe that you are confident in the advice or instructions that you are giving them. Superiors want to know that you believe what you are saying. Leaders should try not to preface their input with self-deprecating comments such as, I'm no expert but, or I'm not sure but, or even, do you mind if I offer my opinion? These things undermine a leader before they even start. It is always best to deliver your view without hesitation, as long as you believe what you say, of course. This clearly shows that you are backing yourself to others and they are far less likely to question your view.